And here we are with the wonderful Emily Swallow from the Book of Book of and from Mandalorian. So, what kind of feeling is it wearing this cool costume? Oh my goodness. Well, <laughs> um, the feeling of being inside the costume is very different from what I know the costume looks like. Because inside the costume, I uh, have very limited visibility. I can't see very well. I can't see to the side. I can't see down. And so the whole time, I'm just hoping that I don't run into anything. <laughs> and um, I'm hoping that the armor doesn't catch fire because I'm wearing fur. But I know that she looks incredible. And so I just try to breathe that in. I have confidence that I look amazing because uh, our costumers are incredible. And uh, I just try not to trip. But did it happen? Did you run into things? I'm sorry? Did you run into things because you can't see them? Yes, that has happened. And fortunately, they edit those things out. And <laughs> when we were first shooting season one, um, there were moments when Uh, I would sometimes hit helmets with other Mandalorians because we were all sort of, it felt like we were groping in the dark because we have tinted visors and we're in dark spaces and if we move our heads around a lot to check where we're going, it's very distracting. You find that you have to have very minimal movement um, because the eye is drawn to the helmet. And so we try not to move our heads very much, which meant that we would run into each other. It's a bit like a Three Stooges act. So did it already hurt or is it just so, so, so kind of a yeah, buffering thing? Oh no, it doesn't hurt. It's it's padded inside, okay. so it's it's comfortable, yes. Did you remember maybe any other, other funny stories from the set? Maybe some things go wrong, the shooting go wrong, some weird things happen during the shooting? Well, I also had trouble um, when I was supposed to be picking up my tools because the gloves that I had were very sturdy and uh, very rugged, but they were also very large. And John Favreau called them my oven mitts because they were so big and unwieldy and it made it hard to pick up some of my tools. So I would try to pick up for example, my tongs, and I would sometimes miss them because I couldn't really feel <laughs> what I was doing, which made me rather clumsy as the armorer. So that's, moments like that, I'm very grateful that I'm doing television and not theater because I know that we can cut those moments out and that our editors will make me look very cool and very uh, adept at what I'm doing. So it's all gonna be okay. It's so great having a blooper reel out of this. So, did you know, is there anything, any blooper reel where all of these nice mistakes are seen? I don't think that they show those. I think it would be pretty fun. But then, then nobody would think that the armor was as, uh, as stealthy, I guess, as she is. Okay, and you're a woman. The man also told me that it's a kind of empowering feeling wearing this Mandalorian suit. So what is this for you as a woman wearing this suit because it looks so so um, so dark, so mysterious, mm -hmm. so dangerous. So how did you feel emotionally wearing that and being in that world? Yeah, it is such an honor to get to play this character. And I love that they chose to make so many of the Star Wars story arcs have a mentor character. There's Obi-Wan Kenobi, there's Yoda, um, and I feel like the armorer serves as the mentor in Din Djarin's story. And I love that John and Dave chose to make it a woman in this chapter of the story. Um, but it's not a big deal that she's a woman. And she carries her authority and she carries her power with great patience and with gentleness almost, which I also think is very important. She chooses not to fight until she absolutely has to, but she knows that she can command a room. She knows that she has the respect of the other Mandalorians that are around her, and she's not aggressive, and I think that that's a very interesting thing about her, that she doesn't, um, she doesn't worry about flexing her muscles, as it were. She just trusts that she has authority, and I think that that's an important thing about her power and something that I really respect about her and that I admire about her. So would you say, last question, what was your best moment? That's a set of Mandalorian or Boba Fett. Maybe the best day ever. Oh did man! You, did you have one? The best day day. ever. Um, the best.
best day? Well, it was really special when I got to come back to shoot the book of Boba Fett because when I was when I was shooting season one of The Mandalorian, so much of it was a mystery. I knew we were doing something related to Star Wars. I knew I was working with incredible people, but I didn't really know what it was all going to look like. And so I was, you know, I, I approached it like I would any of my other work. I did my prep. Um, I worked really hard. I did my best, but I didn't know what the whole thing would look like. And then I got to come back almost two years later and do the book of Boba Fett, having seen all of season one of The Mandalorian. And it was so exciting knowing how wonderful The Mandalorian had turned out and getting to come back with the confidence that this character had made such a strong impression and that I was proud of the work that I had done. And to be able to jump back into that, just feeling so much more confident about it and getting to be excited about continuing that story. So probably just coming back to the Book of Boba Fett. This is the way. This is the way. Great, thank you so much, cool.